Welcome to Mini Fights. My name is Brian, and I have a high level of manual dexterity. This is video four of me painting a Warhammer Underworlds warband of elves with horse legs. This step, as you can see, is masking off the models, and we're just covering them with plastic wrap and Tamiya uh, one centimeter wide tape. The intent here is to only have the weapon blades, the horn, the uh, stag mace, I guess it is. I'm not sure what that weapon is, but we're basically all the weapons are going to be poking out here. Our cat dog, he's done. He's set aside. This is just the four humanoid models that we're going to be working on from this point forward. Now often when I'm airbrushing an effect like this, uh, what we're going to be doing here in a second, I'll actually just hand base coat it. It's, uh, it's sometimes just easier, frankly, than, than doing another step with the, the airbrush for something small like this. So I'm going to go ahead and hand airbrush. Yeah. <laughs> That's not, you can't hand airbrush. Jiminy Christmas. It's too late. Okay. I'm going to hand base coat these with beaten purple. It's a privateer press paint. It's red. So we're going to put that in with the intent that we're going to kind of do a sick fade from purple into a warm gray. Here we go, we're in our airbrush tent and we have Vallejo Gray Violet. Just probably about a six on the value scale, nice warm gray, that's gonna be our first tone we're gonna to apply. It's probably roughly the same value as the purple, so you're not really gonna see a big shift in value, but you're gonna see a big shift in color. That's our first step and we're gonna airbrush that down the blades most of the way, probably 75-80%. Uh, with the horn, we're kind of hitting it from the above areas. The next step is going to be Vallejo Model Air Light Gray. And this is probably about like a 5 in value. And it is a, also another, I would say, lightly warm gray. It's pretty neutral. The last step is going to be Vallejo Light Gull Gray. And this is more of a warm tone. And it is much lighter on the value scale. I apologize for my terrible cinematography. My camera wants to focus on the back of the airbrush and not the model. I will rectify that in further videos, but getting the airbrush in front of the camera like that is just a bad idea. So that's my bad. But you can see what's going on mostly, and you'll see for sure when we get back to the table here in a second. Here we are unwrapping this dude like a Christmas present. Uh, we get to see our sick vapor wave fades. Now, the first step is to go back and fix them, frankly. There's a bunch of shader areas that are blown out. Uh, you can see here in the horn, there's an inlay. There's the little rimmed areas. There's those sort of gem bumps that Games Workshop likes to festoon any sort of elf model with. If you're an elf, you are covered in bumps. They used to be like stones that were all painted as gems. And then at some point, you know, you said, nah, they're just bumps. So you're just covered in bumps. And I had to go back and shade those bumps in. We're also going to apply the purple as a shade back in between the branch-like bow and arrow here. So I guess it's a bow. It's made of some kind of wood, but they actually retain the branches separating, which is kind of neat. A lot of rule of cool stuff going on with these models. I think the sculptor really had a good time with them worked in those wood elf kind of themes into them and sort of ignored uh you know proper weapon design and such but i'm into that i like that a lot that's the age of sigmar aesthetic it's a little over the top and that's the way it should be now everyone's favorite step is taking the side of their brush running it along the edges of their blade crossing their fingers and praying the line comes out smooth and they don't have to go back and try to fix it or remove it. Especially when you put in an airbrush blend here. Uh, you can't really, if you really mess up, you know, you're going to have some trouble rebuilding that blend. So you just got to be careful. 
use the edge of your brush. Make sure that the white highlight that you're using here is nice and fluid. It's got to flow off the brush cleanly as you run the side of the brush down those sharp areas. I think this particular sword took this effect the best. I love the fade of the purple into the gray. And I would say this isn't really non-metallic metal. I'm not highlighting it as such. It doesn't build as dark as a true non-metallic metal would. I would guess this is kind of like, it's maybe like a stone weapon um, or like an, like an ivory or a bone or something. And it's purple because it, it looks cool. As we start to wrap this particular step up, we're just going to hit, kind of add some little glints along where light would hit. Going to add a couple interesting reflections. Maybe these are kind of uh, reflections along flaws in the, in the blade, that sort of thing. Just a couple little items to kind of make the blades a little more interesting than just a straight line edge highlight down the edges of it. Now for basing, I decided after a lot of deliberation, uh, basing was not something in the plan, really, and the bases on these are, are, are sculpted, and I've never really painted models that have like, fully sculpted bases like this before. I haven't done any uh, Warhammer, Underworlds, uh, Elf, Horse Boys, whatever the hell else is in that game. <laughs> so, I, I'm a big proponent of not, not taking the eye off your model to the base. I think bases can be interesting, and they should be. They should flow with the model, but I don't want them to be the, the focal point. And I always tend to paint them in a little looser, kind of lower resolution fashion. So after some deliberation, I decided to use the zenithal priming that was on these bases that I built up at the very beginning where we sprayed the, the airbrush white ink on there. And I just started building up layers of Army Painter's soft tone. A little thinned out with some medium and water as usual. Let it dry, went back and did another coat and just built up coat after coat. So not only are we applying it as a kind of a shade, but we're actually just tinting the entirety of the base with that sepia tone, which I think matches the, the models fairly well. And it doesn't create a situation where we're in here intricately building five layers on the, the sculpted elements of the bases, which I am not interested in doing. And I just think that's kind of, uh, just, that's not my style really. As I built these layers, the first layer I let it really pool, but after that I tried to spread the layers out and make it more of a glaze or a filter rather than a wash. Now this guy, he's got water on his base and I, I don't really want to paint water on his base, but frankly the way it's sculpted, there's really no way of avoiding it. The branch is sort of in the water, it's radiating the little puddly waves out from it. I think we got to paint it as water. So I hit it with a coat of coal black and I hit it with a little bit of a light dry brush coal black mixed with ice yellow. For the plants that are on the bases, these little sort of uh, star-shaped plant, like low ground plants, just threw a little Vallejo green zinc on there. Again, purposefully being kind of low effort, low resolution. We don't want to build a bunch of layers up. We don't want to go nuts with the values where the eye is being drawn away. We don't want big color contrast in the base, in my opinion. We want them to fit, but we don't want them to be take eyes off the miniatures. So I went in here afterwards, mixed a little ice yellow into the green, flicked it on some of the edges. Again, you can see how fast I'm doing it. It's a low resolution style. It's just a little boop here, a little boop there. Build a little light on it, it makes sense. Call it a day.
And you know, the saga is over. We're painting base edges. That's obviously the final step of any miniature. I think these really came together well. I'm, I'm actually ecstatic with the way these came out. And I tried a few new things, which I always try to do. I try to take you on my journey of doing new things and winging it and figuring it out as we go, even though it makes it sometimes a nightmare for me to edit. And sometimes I sound like I'm just moving on with no plan. Uh, that's because I don't have a plan. But we ended up with something good. Sometimes you just pick a step and go, and you make your plan based on that. And then, you know, just sort of the flow chart builds from there. Ah, the last model. Is that the last one? Oh, yeah, look at that. Look at that. I've upgraded. I don't have a regular Lazy Susan that you, you push with your finger anymore. I've got this one that plugs in. I'm a professional YouTuber now. Thank you. But you should definitely subscribe to my channel so I can get all the internet bucks. All jokes aside, though, it's been a wonderful journey. I hope you've enjoyed it, whether you've watched a few minutes of it or you've watched every minute of all four videos. This one was a blast. I actually really enjoyed painting these Underworld models more than I thought I would. I like the idea of buying a little pack of these characterful guys. It's not a unit. It's like five characters, and they're, they're just... They all have a unique look to them, but they all tie together. It's very fun to paint a complete little project like this and just be done with it. And uh, they're done, and I'm stoked about them. They got a little Vaporwave, Synthwave, whatever wave. Got a little teal, got a little purple. They still look like fantasy models. They still look like the Wood Elf Centaur bros that they're supposed to be. So I'm pretty pumped. Like and subscribe. Give me some comments. Tell me what you like. Tell me what you don't. And I will see you in the next video.